So now our next speaker is uh, Samia, Samia Hashog. I don't know if I pronounce her name correct. You uh, okay. And she's an artist, a Saudi artist. I met her um, last year and she showed me some of her work, which I find really nice. And I say, well, it's an excellent opportunity to invite her for, for KAUST. I think she, unfortunately, is not here on campus, but she's here online. And I hope we, she can visit us uh, later on. And she's also a lecturer in uh, Hekma University, not far from Kaos. So I'm looking forward to hearing from Samia. Thank you very much. Hello, is my voice clear? Very clear. Okay, uh, I would like to share my screen. Okay, is it clear to you all? Very clear. Also, we see very well. The okay. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, Weiser, for uh, inviting me to be amongst the speakers today. I feel um, humbled because I am amongst amazing women um, and of course men <laughs> um, in, in science, engineering and research. Um, uh, I'm sorry that I couldn't actually make it today because I'm a little bit under the weather. Uh, so it was a last minute uh, change to technology and thanks to technology. Uh, and your efforts in making this possible that we can actually connect uh, virtually. Uh, my topic today is the importance of cultural identity in Saudi art. Uh, from a personal narrative, because I can't speak for all uh, Saudi artists out there. Uh, so just to be um, uh, truthful uh, to the purpose of this uh, presentation. Um, just a brief um, about me, a brief introduction about me in a nutshell. I was born in Abha, Saudi Arabia in 1958. Um, I'm a mother of three, Jumana, Yusuf, and Hamza. The eldest is 34, the youngest is 19. Yes, there is a gap of seven, eight years. Don't ask me why, but it just happened. Um, uh, I lived in many countries, starting in uh, Riyadh, uh, and I left Riyadh at the age of 12 with my family to Lebanon. And I lived there for five years. Uh, I made some amazing friends. One of them is uh, Dr. Carolina Atiyah, who's a childhood friend. And she, we just happen to be working now at Dar al Hikmah University. Um, I stayed there for five years, also with my family. And then I left at the age of 17 to the UK, London, where I uh, resumed my uh, uh, GCE. It's like O level, A levels, and also my. Uh, a bachelor degree of studies at Kingston University. I graduated in 1982 uh, and I was, I went back to Jeddah and I was um, lucky actually at the time um, to work with my brother who had uh, an interior design uh, furniture shop and also a um, company uh, called Condas. It doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but he offered me a job and it, I was the first interior design um, uh, female to, to be given uh, uh, you know, a position uh, in the market at that time. And I had to be very careful um, for two years uh, where there was the Motawa, I don't know, the, the, the religious police, they would um, you know, randomly um, go into shops and, and see if women are employed or not at the time. And um, I had to put my abaya and, and pretend that I am uh, one of the, um, you know, uh, customers. So it was, it was fine, but it wasn't really comfortable for me to focus on my work. Uh, another, um, I wasn't given, you know, opportunities to, uh, to work as a designer. Of course, you graduate from London, Kingston, and you would imagine I uh, maybe a lot of a lot of you can relate to this that you will be the one to change the world you know and be pioneering in this and that um, uh, I'm the daughter of uh, a pioneering uh, and, um, surgeon uh, my father was the first uh, also first Saudi surgeon and he was a private uh, physician to the uh, to King Abdul Aziz um, although this is I'm very proud of this history but a kind of um, uh, put um, 
pressure on us as children to to be the same, to you know, to stand up uh, to his uh, position and his achievements. And he always believes in all of us, uh, girls and boys, uh, to have equal uh, opportunities. And uh, he believed that we can reach our fullest potential. He was a great man of his time. Unfortunately, he died when I was 18. So, you know, um, he, it, it was, he was, my mother was a third wife. Uh, so unfortunately we didn't get to enjoy my dad um, for a longer period of time. Um, the thing is, I, we, oh, I think my brothers and I, most of us, okay, are achievers because of this upbringing. And I, uh, I can relate to all the uh, previous uh, speakers in the importance of parents um, instilling um, the, uh, the strength in their children uh, to achieve uh, you know, their fullest potential. And that doesn't mean that they have to you know, get awards or be in position, but just to reach their fullest uh, potential because having done that, you'll be the happiest person. Um, and uh, I think the goal is really not to be an achiever, but to, to lead a happy, balanced life where you can feel that your existence on this planet matters. Um, I worked, so basically I worked for two years and then I got married in 1986. And because I had issues with the clients and also the, uh, the team, you know, wasn't cooperative and all that. And I, I said, maybe uh, I'd rather focus on my married life and my child who was a daughter at the time. I switched to academia. Very little did I know that I would amazingly uh, enjoy teaching and that I would follow that as a career. Strange things happen to us and we are not aware of the, you know, the future plan um, that the universe has, uh, you know, Installed. I would say in universe because uh, I don't want to uh, say Allah or God or that I do believe in that. But anyway, whatever was whatever is planned for us as human beings out there, uh, we we don't realize why things are happening. Sometimes we get uh, upset and you know uh, and and try to resist and fight uh, a position or a, a promotion or a demotion and we don't understand that there is a bigger plan behind it that we are going to see in the future um at the age of um, yeah 44 i had my uh, youngest hamza and i'm really grateful for that uh, addition um and at the time when I applied to my MFA uh, at Demofit University, and luckily the university had this um, uh, option that you can have an interrupted study. Uh, so you can have it for three months, I think twice or three times while, uh, you know, for the duration of your study. So I only did it twice and it was amazing because uh, sure it delayed my um, uh, um, graduation to uh, February 2006, but uh, Alhamdulillah, I graduated with distinction and uh, he was just a baby and he needed my care. Um, just one thing I would like to add that I never worked as a full-time uh, faculty until 2007 when my child was uh, safely at school and he came out at two o'clock where I could pick him up and uh, still do the six hours required by the university. University of Dal Hikmah has been amazingly supportive in my career and still is, I'm still back with them. Um, and uh, I'd like to say that also they think about the, uh, the importance of um, offering support to women workers um, in terms of childcare and uh, you know, other opportunities like maternity leave and all that. Um, so I am lucky that I ended up in these kind of venues. I'm a practicing artist since 1990. Um, that was my first public show and uh, until present, but it was interrupted by academic uh, duties. Uh, as everyone knows that academia has a lot of paperwork <laughs> uh, beside teaching and all that. Um, I did win an award by Saudi uh, airline called Malwan Competition. The Malwan Competition is, uh, started in 1992. And uh, that was the first achievement for me. So, you know, I was uh, glad. In 2005, after 
um, during my de Montfort um, master degree um, research, I created Saudi Art Women Artists Group. And the reason for that is that we, um, I selected this group as a result of my master uh, research because I, uh, I had 40 uh, artists to interview and to get to know. And I only selected 10 where we created the Saudi Art Women as a supportive uh, uh, community. Uh, for us to, um, uh, you know, to interact and also financially, it would be easier if we had to rent a place for 10,000 or pay. It was actually um, pricey to have an exhibition. So that way uh, we can continue with our jobs and uh, motherhood because, you know, uh, we have children to attend to. And at the same time, not forget our passion about art and be practicing, continue to be practicing artists. Um, the requirement was four paintings a year which wasn't much for most of the uh, artists, uh, but gradually they kind of waned out on me because of health or travel or whatever. And uh, Saudi Yat had kind of uh, dissipated after 2012. We had four successful uh, exhibition. I also created Anonymous Was a Woman um, in 2014, and that was to celebrate 50 years of Saudi women achievements. And it was in the form of a, um, a timeline panel uh, that was show showcased at Hafez Gallery with uh, 24 uh, other artists. The artists exhibited uh, video uh, stills. Um, uh, we didn't have performance at the time, it was sculpture. It was uh, paintings and it was the representation of women by women. How do women see other women? And I thought that was an interesting uh, intake. Um, and I used, uh, um, you know, um, that kind of um, uh, theme, okay, to showcase the, the achievement. I was also honored at Dar al Hikma uh, in 2014-15 to have received the annual award for excellence in teaching. Um, and I held two solo art exhibitions uh, in 2000 and again in 2014. I will be talking about my art and I will show you slides from this point onward. Sorry about still talking um, with this slide, but it is the main um, uh, talk for my um, for my 30 minute slot, I think we're okay. Um, uh, I participated at numerous group exhibitions in Jeddah, Riyadh, Medina, Moscow, and Paris. Uh, I am the founder of Seju Creative Art Studio, which was uh, founded in 2018 and still uh, currently uh, active. I'm currently a lecturer back in art and design, um, teaching history and art and design courses at Dal Hikma University from fall 2021 to present. So if we talk about identity, what uh, the, the Cambridge Dictionary will tell you identity is who a person is or the qualities of a person or group that make the different, uh, make them different from others. Uh, for me, my definition is that identities are formed by external and internal factors. And here you would see, you know, what these factors are. It could be religion, social culture, ethnicity, society, and so on, you get the picture. Um, a historical overview of Saudi art. Um, Saudi art is divided into four phases by some of the historians that actually published books. The, the books are not, they're very scarce. Um, there are about four or five uh, published books about Saudi art. Um, the, uh, the first one is phase one, and we know the pioneers um, in 1950s and 60s. Uh, we have four artists uh, that uh, resonate as pioneers, uh, Abdel Halim al Radwi and Muhammad uh, Salim, as well as uh, Ustaz Safiya bin Zagir and uh, God rest her soul, Munira al Musli. So these are the pioneering artists. Now, for Safiya bin Zagir and Munira al Musli, they, were, they came from a um, capable, financially capable background where they could go to Egypt or London and pursue their studies. Others didn't have that chance. And they had to do it alone because scholarships were not offered to women, only to men who were uh, supposed to go and um, get scholarship in Rome, um, uh, Egypt, Italy, uh, sorry, Italy, Rome, uh, yeah, Italy and uh, um, the US. Uh, as well as Lebanon and Egypt. And they would come back as teachers, art teachers teaching at uh, 
the the uh, Saudi art curriculum, which had Saudi curriculum, which had art subjects, and then it was taken out, um, which was uh, sad. But uh, now I think they uh, reimbursed uh, that, um, they reinstilled that into the program. Uh, the curriculum, which is a good thing. It's a must actually. So phase uh, three, uh, very few women uh, existed at phase two, but in phase three, um, groups of women started to uh, be seen. Um, and for the same reason that they wanted to fit into the uh, male artist, uh, you know, community, uh, but with strength, because if they are, if it's not just a one woman, she would actually not have a chance, but if they are a group, then they would have more of a chance to uh, exhibit for them. In phase four, uh, which started in 2003 and present, this is the, the kind of art you see today that is being uh, showcased by so many galleries, Arthur Gallery, Hafiz Gallery, uh, Tasami Gallery, and of course, SAC, Saudi Art Council, uh, led by, founded by uh, Princess Jawahar bint Majid and uh, uh, they have two exhibitions. One of them is currently running. So if you did not go see it, uh, I would advise you to see it. It is curated by uh, Venetia Porter um, in uh, Goldmore uh, Jeddah at the SAC um, uh, headquarters. So the reflection of cultural identity in Saudi art is seen through uh, the uh, Arabic calligraphy, free lettering. Free lettering is different because it doesn't have any standards in terms of uh, uh, Arabic calligraphy. And of course, cultural and uh, regional icons and symbols, we see that in uh, a lot of artists' work. Islamic icons and symbols, in indigenous patterns, indigenous color palettes, indigenous uh, traditional objects like a dalla, el the incense burner and so on, you know, that we are familiar with, or it could be some, you know, traditional objects that we see uh, across Saudi Arabia. Cultural themes and context as well. Um, contemporary Saudi uh, paintings are mostly seen in oil, acrylic, collage, and mixed media. But we see artists have started spe specifically in the last phase, uh, to have collaborative art, to have site-specific art, public performance, uh, film and video, um, uh, calligraphy, um, and uh, installations as well. So uh, because the artists had the chance and the platform to exhibit uh, uh, on an international level, uh, so they get to see what is exhibited there and they, uh, they would compete. This is an image of Abd al-Halim al radwi who is a pioneer in the phase uh, one. But of course, this painting was painted late. He died in 2006, God rest his soul. And uh, this is one of his paintings. I will have to go through because I know we're short with time. Uh, this is a painting of Safiya bin Zagar, and this is a shaving ceremony and the shaving ceremony of uh, a groom a bride, uh, yes, a groom uh, for a wedding. So he is surrounded by these ladies that kind of uh, uh, sing and uh, celebrate. Uh, they make it into an occasion. Uh, and this is uh, the barber. And she created that in 1975. Uh, Safiya Ben Zeger has published uh, her work and she has a data uh, where she housed, she's a great supporter for art and artists. And I had the privilege of taking uh, courses at um, at her daughter uh, with, uh, under the tutelage of Dorothy Boyer, who's, uh, who lived here for a while, but she's an amazing um, artist, very, you know, uh, creative, and also uh, Suzanne Elliott. Um, and it was a great time for me, also time to be away for three hours uh, painting uninterrupted. Ahmad al Maglous also is um, from phase two, but this painting is uh, in 2000. And we see a lady covered with, they used to wear the abaya on their head so that the body does not, uh, is not descriptive. Um, and that was a fashion for a while until they dropped it on the shoulder. And now the abaya is merely um, a fashion trend. This is also cultural. This is Tagrid al uh, She has stylized her work and she's very much, her subject is always uh, about uh, women and empowerment. Um, and here it says, do you love me? 
you know, so basically the handkerchief, that the, you know, people are glued to uh, watching these kind of uh, sitcoms. Here, uh, Fatma Nimer, uh, the bride carpet, and uh, it's collage acrylic on uh, carpet. She works on carpet. So we see that the media has changed uh, for them to, to express their own identity and also culture. Uh, Fatma Nimer is one of the few artists, if it's not the only artist, who actually uses her own face uh, and portraits in her work. Dana Wartani has created this installation at 2139, I think 2014, and the, the amazing thing about Dana Wartani, who, is, uh, who has a master's degree in Islamic uh, uh, art um, um, from Prince Charles Traditional uh, School in London, <clears throat> she created this pattern using tape, colored tape, and that's when you see the media, uh, or the medium that she has selected, it shows you the, the, the amount of uh, effort and work that went through this uh, installation. Here, Abdullah Hamas is a, uh, an artist from the South. I relate so much to his work. Uh, he's an inspiration. He uh, created this kind of like uh, ladies with the hats. And you do see that if you went to Abha or Asi, you see the icons, the palm tree, and this is not a pyramid, but it's kind of like a hut with a, an Islamic crescent. Um, and also he's known for these figures, these little uh, bubbles of figures. Uh, Ibrahim Bogus, again, you see cultural uh, icons and Islamic icons like the masjid here and the palm trees and some other compositions um, that would reflect his own cultural identity. Ahmed Mater um, uh, created this magnetism series. It's actually uh, a lot of uh, installations uh, and they are quite small. I thought the, the first time I saw this picture, this fo a photo of the work, I thought that this is huge cube, but, but actually it is shavings of uh, metal that uh, resist, of course, uh, through magnetism, uh, this cube and uh, kind of uh, stops here. And it, it kind of uh, shows the, uh, metaphorically, uh, the uh, importance of, uh, you know, our religion in terms of um, uh, att att attracting or how attracted we are or how, uh, what's the word? Um, I can't think of the word right now, but anyway, it is like, it's like a magnetism between you and your religion. You can't, Sometimes you can't shake it off because it is uh, deeply um, embedded either through upbringing or through culture or so, uh, society. Manala Dumayan is a feminist Saudi artist and she uses installations. Here um, it is uh, to uh, showcase the, uh, uh, the importance of uh, unnamed women because she did also a video which I saw um, it's called Ismi, My Name, and it was done in 2012. It was collaborative work with the public, and I was, I had the, um, uh, I was grateful to be part of uh, this uh, project, um, and I think my name is written somewhere uh, in one of the installations. She did quite a few, and she did a recording where she recorded uh, uh, random people in the street and asked them what is your mother's name and they got upset and they would uh, sometimes they would actually insult and curse how dare you ask me uh, about my mother's name uh, which kind of was a taboo I don't think it is the case anymore but maybe in some remote uh, areas in Saudi Arabia still is. Um, uh, this one also is me um, is suspended together. Suspended together um, is, it's no longer exists, but this is a very strong um, a statement against uh, having to have your, uh, your husband or your brother's um, signature for you to leave the country. And without their permission, you cannot leave. Uh, so we were as female tied to their uh, mercy. But it's no longer, thank God for the change, it's no longer the case. Rashid al he uses a found object that you find the shatay, which is here like, uh, you know, plastic sieve, uh, to create these amazing structures. Um, and his, re his object, uh, objective was uh, to uh, 
test the purpose of human existence and or to explore and the functions of society. Rada <clears throat> Rabia uh, is Siti Saada or Sidi Said. I think it was also a song, um, traditional folk uh, song. And she uses uh, candy wrappers to create this work. And we know that this is an appropriation of a Western artist. Uh, Science specific uh, installation by Zahra Al Ghamdi, we see that the medium has changed. And this artist uh, also uh, connects, uh, uh, sorry, uh, connects to um, uh, the earth, uh, clay rocks, her own environment. And she uses that uh, to create some amazing installations. This one is made out of leather as well. Sabi Turkey um, uh, reflects here the importance of having a land, but here it is, uh, he took these photographs of uh, uh, Al Barzakh, he calls it Al Barzakh Syria. Al Barzakh is a place between earth, as we die, we go to this place between heaven and earth called Al Barzakh, and we wait. Um, until, you know, um, judgment day, I think. So anyway, um, uh, Al-Barzakh is um, a place where uh, it's a state of in-between and uh, neither here nor there. And uh, what Sami at Turkey wanted to uh, highlight is the, uh, the, the almost impossible uh, chance of getting your own land because of the prices or because of... Uh, uh, lack of land because most of them were taken to uh, by investors or whatever. So it was hard for him. So he said, I'll just keep dreaming. Maybe I'll have my house one day in Barzakh. Uh, my cultural uh, art identity as a personal narrative. I started uh, in phase one, uh, trying to uh, not impress or uh, ask, uh, seek uh, validation uh, public validation, but I wanted to prove to myself that I can actually paint. Um, and uh, it was, that phase was actually just working on my skills until um, I, um, this was still, until phase two, where I, I needed to stylize and abstract my work to be able to have visual uh, freedom and liberate myself so, the, so that I can express myself better. And that was the first uh, Saudi art, uh, art exhibition. It was part of also my uh, MA thesis. And uh, I had a viva at De Montfort University where I had to exhibit the uh, artwork and also I had a video uh, documentation. This is a social inspiration from our weddings. Um, I love our weddings. I love the songs. I love the interaction. And they're all veiled because there is a message that I want to say that the, uh, the West judges us for um, being um, probably oppressed by religion. While we are actually like other women, we like to dance, we like to listen to music, we interact together, we are powerful together. So it's, uh, you know, sure it is segregated, but we are freer to be uh, whoever we want to be. Um, this one is inspired by traditional songs. I don't know if you know them, but uh, anyway, there's like uh, the uh, Islamic kind of patterns, the Islamic icon, and the ribbons uh, that creates that kind of movement, because we are constantly moving. Uh, these are other examples. Uh, here is Tala uh, al-Badru alayna. This is a song that was sung by a Najjar women when the Prophet uh, Muhammad uh, um, entered Medina and he was welcomed by a Najjar women in that song. So I just wanted to create my feeling about that song. Um, here is my pride, is my, uh, my, country, my religion, my country and my family unit. Then in phase three, I started collaging. I started mixed media and also journaling a lot. As I said, my academic work didn't give me the chance to, um, you know, to uh, produce as much work as I wanted to. So in uh, my second solo, this is called Phases, uh, Phase 4, uh, it's called Mashi Mashi. Mashi Mashi in Arabic is mean let go, let go. And this is a statement we always uh, hear uh, for not having, uh, for not resolving, is letting go and don't uh, uh, dwell on things, which I think is wrong in a way. But anyway, that was the case. 
Um, these are examples. I just have to go through them quickly for the derivative of this. So as you see, I was using collage and the patches and collage helped me because um, the, uh, the series called patches and uh, we, we tend to patch our relationships without really deeply uh, resolving our issues. Uh, it's either because of fear of loss or fear of um, not wanting of negative uh, talks or whatever the reason is, we tend to just uh, let go. This reminds me of women at war when, you know, the woman has got this burden on her head, on her shoulder, uh, her children, not knowing where to go, but she is resilient, she will make it. This is uh, brotherhood as well. We tend to think that our brothers are always our support. Sometimes you see in society and here, it doesn't reflect my own. I was lucky, uh, I'm, I am lucky actually to have a supporting family, but uh, I see, I observe that a lot of women don't have that either a supportive father or brothers. Here uh, we call this the Sayyid where the man is a, in, the, in the forefront and his pregnant woman is in the background having uh, fulfilled her job and he is the master of the house. So we see that as an image. It was just something that I wanted to highlight. Here, a dreamer thinking of the past, always living in the past, not in the moment or neither in the future. Um, the faces are dreamy because they are faces of the past. In this one, we see the chair and uh, that is um, when you have... Uh, um, when you work in a company, um, always everyone is, is kind of uh, wanting to sit on that chair, which is the, the highest position in the company. And although the chair doesn't come without any problems and challenges, it still looks decorative and, and it's neither here or there. It's hang, hung by, you know, you could lose your job any minute. So it's hung by um, very thin threads. In this one, I highlighted the importance of uh, restoration in al -Balad because we see that they put these kind of festivities and all that, and we keep hearing of fires or um, the uh, destruction of some of the, um, uh, some of the uh, buildings, unnecessarily, of course, but that was the case. So that was the series that I created. And this was the last one that I uh, showcased at Shara exhibition in 2020 and both uh, all work was sold, this one. Um, uh, here it's about resilience and it was the product of COVID where um, no matter if you're a family, um, you know, you're uh, older at age or you're just, you know, um, uh, in your uh, mid age or, or a mother, you're always resi uh, resilient and you are um, standing on your feet and um, taking on any challenge. In this one, it is about the uh, technology and what it, it, it's doing to our children. They are forgetting to be children. So there is the, the playground in the back, the fun fair, as we say, you know, uh, um, and uh, she's oblivious of that and she is in a bubble. All the information that comes of the uh, iPad is usually because whatever they see is not really knowledgeable. It is uh, TikTok and Instagram and Snapchat. And it's all uh, information that's kind of um, disappearing. Um, I found uh, support by uh, an international, Imaj um, Mandi. He distributed these kind of mini uh, 10 by 12 centimeters um, uh, canvases where we had to celebrate culture and it was published in a thick book uh, by so many contemporary artists from Saudi Arabia. And that is another publication where I am showcased uh, as uh, 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 taking the initiative in supporting Saudi artists uh, through Saudi Yatum Artist Group. These are some links and um, thank you and I leave you with one quote from Mahatma Gandhi is you must be the change you wish to see in the world and do not seek external validation but rely on be happy with your own uh, judgment okay thank you very much any questions thank you very much
You're welcome. Thank you very much. I, I have been told that we are late, that we cannot have questions anymore, but we have That's to bring you here yeah. on campus, uh, maybe with an exhibition or so. Inshallah. Really Inshallah. Thank you so much for it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. So for those who are on campus, we have a lunch now. Uh, it will be in building three. If we could go as a group then for the those who are not from Chaos, it will be easier to follow. Uh, it's in level five, building three. And then we start again here at uh, 1.40 Saudi Arabia time. Thank you.